Okay, now that it is recording, I wanted to let everyone know that we do have um, interpreters on the call assisting us tonight because we want to be inclusive of our entire community. So we will um, make sure that we give them the opportunity to interpret what I say and what you say and the questions that you have and then the responses. And um, so that we can make sure that there is a great level of understanding um, with what we are trying to do today with our vision statement. Um, so at this time, I want to welcome everyone to our virtual strategic improvement plan uh, meeting. And I thank you for taking your time to speak with us tonight. And just so you know, the purpose of this meeting is to garner your feedback on the proposed vision statement. And I'm going to pause at this time and allow um, our Spanish interpreter to speak at this time and welcome everyone. Buenas tardes, yo soy la señora Díaz. Yo seré su intérprete en, en la tarde de hoy. La doctora Wiley, que es la que acaba de presentar, les da la bienvenida a, a nuestra reunión virtual de colaboración para discutir el plan estratégico de mejora. Una de las cosas que dijo ella fue que este, esta reunión va a ser grabada y además de ser grabada, le pedimos a ustedes que necesitan un servicio de interpretación que por favor pausen cada vez que hablen para que le permita al intérprete poder dar su información. Escucha. Eh, Esta reunión sí es grabada. Si eventualmente no interesa ser grabado, por favor, ponga, apague la cámara para que su imagen no salga grabada. Gracias y que pase buenas tardes. And then um, I believe we do have a um, Vietnamese. Yeah. Dạ vâng, buổi họp ngày hôm nay sẽ có cái buổi họp ngày hôm nay nói về cuộc họp về kế hoạch cải thiện chiến lược uh, để uh, giúp đỡ trong chương trình học tập và uh, tại uh, And so uh, at this time, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, let me continue. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, vâng, chương trình học uh, ngày hôm nay sẽ có thu hình và sẽ ghi âm lại trong uh, buổi họp ngày hôm nay cho nên quý vị nào không muốn được uh, quay hình hoặc là không muốn có tiếng nói thì mình có thể uh, tắt cái phần um, à, thâu hình và như cái um, máy vi âm của mình cho nên cuộc họp ngày hôm nay sẽ nói về, về kế hoạch cải thiện chiến lược uh, giúp đỡ cho trường quận Clayton. Ok. <cười> Thank you. Um, and at this time, I was reminded that um, it would be best that we ask if anyone would need interpreting services. So at this time, if you would like to continue the Spanish um, services, Please unmute yourself at this time, and then you can translate that for me. Sí, en estos momentos le pedimos a las personas que estén interesadas en los servicios de interpretación que por favor um, desconecten el micrófono para que digan que están interesados para nosotros proseguir con la reunión. Mm -hmm. Nếu ở trong đây uh, muốn có uh, cần người phiên dịch hay cần cái vấn đề gì thì quý vị có thể uh, nêu ý kiến còn nếu không thì cứ tiếp tục. I don't have to. <cười> okay, so we are going to uh, move forward at this time. Uh, I saw that Dr. Beasley joined the group, so if he um, would like to say something to the community at this time, I'm going to give him the opportunity to do so. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Wiley, for this strategic improvement plan planning session where we get <laughs> feedback from our community on our new vision statement proposed to our Board of Education. So, everyone, I hope that you will... Uh, give us the feedback that we need as we actually continue in our strategic planning process. I often tell people you don't start and finish it. It's a cycle. It continues to go on and on. You just revise it from year to year. And so now we're at a point in time where we're ready. We're in. We're ready to revise our vision statement. We've been working with the National Institute for School Leadership. We've been studying visions and approaches from uh, of high performing school systems from around the world. And we're very pleased to bring to you this draft of our vision statement. So thank you for taking out time. I know everyone is very busy. I know it's the summertime and you could possibly be at a pool enjoying 
time with the family, but thank you for taking out time to participate in this session. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. You're welcome. And I believe, I, believe I did see some um, board members on the call, so I want to welcome them as well and any community members that we have or community leaders, um, elected officials that we may have on the call as well. Um, but since we did not have anyone requesting the interpreting services, we're going to move forward with English. Um, and then if I see in the chat box that we need to go back to using our interpreters, then we will do so um, at that time. So with that, I want to go back in history to about 2017. Oh, cool. Can we be sure that everyone mutes their um, mobile devices, cell phones, or whatever we're using at this time? No. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the vision of Clayton County Public Schools is to be a district of high performance, preparing all students to live and compete successfully in a global society. That was our vision statement that we drafted in 2017. And so through going through um, different phases in our school system, we determined this year that we really need to focus on where we are and where we want to be within the next three to five years. So this year we decided to have a focus group comprised of district leadership, school leadership, community members, um, and very, from various organizations, and we received training this year um, to look at the redesign of our school district and possibly changing the vision, mission, and like Dr. Beasley said, we always look at our strategic improvement plan yearly, monthly, um, so that we can ensure that we're giving the right services to our community. Um, so with that, our vision statement that the organization drafted and please know that this is just a proposed vision statement our uh, board of education they will vote on uh, the proposed vision statement and then it will be will become official but our process is that we're bringing this to you today so that you can have um, input and where we would like to go with our uh, school system and our students' achievement. And then once we um, have your input, we will take your input, we'll draft it, and we'll put it out there for the masses via a um, survey. And once the survey is completed, we'll clean up the proposed vision statement using uh, feedback that we've um, garnered from you all, and then we'll propose it to our Board of Education. But I'm, if you don't mind, I'm going to read the proposed vision. The vision of Clayton County Public Schools is to produce graduates who have the skill to pursue and successfully accomplish college, post-secondary training, and or a, a career opportunity as a result of their ability to read proficiently and critically in order to use knowledge to solve problems, effectively communicate when writing and speaking, demonstrate noble character as an engaged, well-rounded citizen, leverage technology efficiently and creatively, lead, collaborate, and contribute to a team and community, manifest passions into realities and exhibit cultural responsiveness and international competitiveness in order to adapt and keep pace in an ever evolving world. And I know you're saying, oh my goodness, that's a lot for a vision statement. But when we research the high performing school districts, not just in the United States, but across this world in Singapore, Finland, um, we saw that their vision statements were longer, but they were explicit and they were very detailed in what they expected of not only their students, but what they expected of the community and of um, the school systems. So we decided to uh, model our vision after them so that uh, we can continue to be competitive internationally. And with that, I am going to take your, um, thank you, Ms. Cochran. I am going to take your comments at this time, but we're going to do it um, 
step by step by each bullet. So on the on the pages that you will see, I will have one vision, I mean, one bullet. And you will see read proficiently and critically in order to use knowledge to solve problems. So right now I would like to discuss read proficiently, critically in order to use knowledge to solve problems. And if you have questions, the way we're going to do this is in your chat box, you can, you can enter a question mark and then that will let me know that there are some questions out there or you can type your questions in the chat box and then we can go from there and I can answer your questions at this time. But with this first bullet, read proficiently and critically in order to use knowledge to solve problems. We all know that if a child or if an adult cannot read, um, then it's difficult to solve math problems. It's difficult to solve any um, science problems. It's, it's really difficult. So we wanted to make sure that that was front, first and foremost, read proficiently, because we want to make sure that all of our students are reading at or above grade level um, throughout their duration here in Clayton County Public Schools. So at this time, I will pause and see if anyone has any questions or any comments about this particular bullet. Okay, seeing there are none, but if, you, if you're typing and I move too quickly for you, I will go back and uh, read your comments. Communicate when writing and speaking. Effectively communicate when writing and speaking. Of course, this is important um, for our students to be able to communicate, not just with writing, because we do a lot of writing in, um, in classes. We know that we see it, but we also want them to be able to communicate through speaking. Um, so that is why you see that in our vision statement, effectively communicate when writing and speaking. Any questions or comments on that particular bullet? Okay. Demonstrate noble character as an engaged, well-rounded citizen. The last time we had our community meeting, it, it was before the schools, um, the school buildings closed for COVID-19. We were discussing and had a deep conversation about the word noble. It was brought to um, brought to us as if the students would not be able to understand the word noble. And we thought that it was important to keep the word noble in our vision statement so that we can ensure that we're making sure our students' vocabulary increases. And it is our duty as educators in this school system is to ensure when students see this vision statement, um, we will tell them what do you, what we mean about noble. Noble is just making sure that you have those personal qualities and your high moral principles and ideals. So we will go through the process of making sure that every student understands what does it mean to demonstrate a noble character as an engaged, well-rounded citizen. And to me, noble means the highest, the highest of personal qualities, the highest of morale and uh, principles and, and ideals. Um, so that is why we decided to keep it in the um, vision statement. So is there any questions about this particular um, bullet point in our vision statement? Let me check my chat box, nothing in my chat box. Um, Olivia um, Sullivan Fuller asked, how will this be done? I'm going to assume you're going to ask how will we um, teach the students um, the vision statement and what we mean by the vision statement. We decided during the community meeting that the same way we go over the um, student handbook with students, we're going to go over the vision statement with students. And to believe it or not, we do character ed every single day. We teach how to be a noble character or how to demonstrate that every single day. 
but to give them a level of understanding and what we mean, this will be done the exact same way um, that we teach the student handbook the first week of school. And then of course it will um, be the responsibilities of the schools, of every teacher, um, of every staff member in the building, the responsibility of the district to ensure that we're demonstrating noble character so that our students can not only practice, but they can see it in action as well. So uh, I hope that answered your question. Dr. Wiley. Yes, yes, sir. Um, when I read that, I read that for the, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. As I read the question, I was thinking that they were possibly asking how would we teach students to have noble character and be engaged as well-rounded citizen. And I, I could be wrong, but I was thinking that's what, that's, uh, and maybe the question was uh, posted before we even got to this slide. I just noticed it on this slide. Yeah, and she said- And she said, oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes. And please note that a vision statement is not just for the school system. It is for everyone in our community, every single stakeholder. So like I said before, um, Character ed is something that we teach every, every single day. If you look at the standards of your um, students' classes, the standards, in a way, they have character education. Um, for example, in visual arts, we have to teach um, students the appreciation of the arts and um, what it means to, to our world today. And so that is teaching um, character that is teaching how to demonstrate it as well through your art. So you will see that every single day through different subject areas. On a grander scale, um, it's up to us, like I said before, to teach by example. And I think that's the biggest way that we can teach how to demonstrate being a noble character is teaching by example, um, showing students great examples of uh, having um, being a well-rounded citizen. What does it mean to be well-rounded? Giving the students the opportunity to engage in different activities that will demonstrate being a citizen, a well-rounded citizen. So it, it will be taught throughout the day in classes with curriculum. Um, the great thing about our Georgia standards is that, like I said, it does, uh, they do have character ed embedded into the standards. I think that's a great response. I would just like to add, if I may, that yes. when our teachers plan for instruction, when they do cooperative learning activities, they are building into those activities opportunities for students to take on different roles. Uh, and that's part of learning how to be a well-rounded citizen, how to demonstrate the right character. So there's not one specific, you know, you don't just say every day we're gonna teach you character. Uh, we do we do teach character traits throughout the curriculum K-12. However, uh, it's really about modeling and expecting students to, to demonstrate noble character. When we teach the student code of conduct and we expect students to adhere to the student code of conduct, we're showing students how we expect them to demonstrate noble character. When we a, a teacher gives an assignment and expects them to turn the assignment in on time and not cheat, uh, and, to, and, to, and to be trustworthy, we're teaching them noble character. So uh, I know sometimes we want, you know, what are you gonna do every day at a particular time of day? But when you, it's, it's kind of like raising children, uh, I, I model for my children the character that I want. Yes, we talk about truthfulness and, and not lying and treating others the way you wanna be treated. And there are times when we explicitly discuss those things but most of the time we teach those things implicitly by what we say, by what we do, how we respond, et cetera. So I hope that helps a little bit. Okay. And so if there are no other questions on, on the previous slide, bullet point in our vision statement, it says exude self-awareness, self-regulation and self-confidence. Again, the word exude came up in our last community meeting, and I have the same response that is up to us, up to the community, to teach our students what do we mean by exude. Um, and for those of you, um, to me, it means you're going to 
display an emotional quality strongly and openly. So you're going to openly have and have strong self-awareness. You're going to have strong self-regulation and, and self-confidence. And Dr. Beasley's example um, about co cooperative learning, um, that is a way that we teach self-awareness and self-regulation and self-confidence because through your cooperative learning, you're learning how to regulate your comments to your um, to your group members, you're learning how to have within yourself that I'm confident enough to speak out in my group and to talk to my group about um, whatever topic that they have in class. And then you become self-aware of who you are. Um, and that's extremely important for them to understand who they are, not only as a student, but as a person as well. So I'll pause this time uh, to see if Dr. Beasley or any of our board members want to say anything or if there are any comments or questions that you may have that you want to put in the chat box. Okay, seeing none. Dr. Wiley. Dr. Dr. Wiley. Yes. I'll defer to the board members because I've already shared comments, uh, but I appreciate the parents for uh, participating and, and giving us their feedback and asking the questions. And it's always good to see that the mm -hmm. questions oftentimes are very consistent and the comments are very consistent and that which gives us uh, good feedback. So we'll know, okay, this is an area that we need to continue to, to look at or, or, or mm -hmm. clarify, et cetera. But I'll defer to the board members that are on the session. Um, I would say something. This is Judy Johnson, District 7. I was actually in on this um, initial planning meeting, and I really like the wording that is in this statement. So I'm very pleased with this. I know that there may see, be some other board members that uh, don't like a long vision statement, but I believe if you can convey what we need to convey, then it's important to use the wording necessary. And thank you, Ms. Johnson. And we did have um, someone ask a question about elementary students. It may be a bit much, but when we are teaching it to elementary students, we have to teach it to their level, but we want them to understand how, what that word means, because we don't want them to continue to use words like exude on an elementary level, you may hear some of them say, oh, we're gonna, is, this is oozing out or we're gonna spread out. That's, that's basically, basically what warms my heart when I hear elementary students when I go into classrooms and they, they're using the high level vocabulary. Um, so we have to continue to just, we'll put it in the words that they understand, but then we will ask them to use those high level vocabulary words um, from that point forward. Let's see, um, we do have another question. Does that mean teaching our students the soft skills as well as they learn to navigate in all aspects of society? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am, it does. Um, the soft skills are just as important um, as any of the other skills that we teach in, in every day, in everyday life. Um, that's why it's a community effort. And that's why we're making sure that we receive your input so that you're letting us know what other skills that we may be missing, what other skills you may want to see as well. And they're embedded in the courses as well. Those soft, soft skills uh, are very much embedded, you know, if you just talk to any teacher and ask a teacher, how are they teaching soft skills? I, I would imagine just, I, you would just be amazed at the consistent response, you know, getting to class on time, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. responding, to, <laughs> responding to someone when you have a difference in an appropriate manner, appreciating differences. All of those are soft skills that our teachers are, 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 are really teaching and modeling for our students. And, and I, what I'd like, love to see is, the entire community, households, families, and all become more intentional about modeling and, and the soft skills that we know the employers and others are telling us they would like to see uh, more prevalent in, in, in the workforce. And so um, it's an opportunity for us as a community to, to, to really take on that as a responsibility. Thank you, Dr. Beasley. 
if there are no other questions on this particular um, bullet, then I'm going to move to the next one. Leverage technology efficiently and creatively. Oh, this is just a hot topic now. Mm -hmm. um, so we're glad that we, we decided to put this in the vision before we even knew anything about um, COVID-19 and going virtually. So it's extremely important that we make sure that we teach our students not only how to do word processing, things that were, that were taught to us um, when we were going to school, but to also use it to um, code, use it to be creative, um, and to be efficient with your work. Um, I, I use this with my son all the time, work smarter, not harder, um, when you're using your technology. So let's be efficient, um, but also be creative. So at this time, I'm, I'm gonna pause because we can talk about the importance of technology all day long. Um, especially given what we're going through right now. So I'm going to pause to see if there are any questions in the chat box um, or any comments. I'd like to ask a question to, to the uh, participants. Do they like this way of, of participating? You know, normally we have face-to-face -face meetings. So do they like this way of of participating. I noticed we got 44 people. That's probably more than I've seen in face-to-face -face sessions. <laughs> yes. So do they like this way of participating? <laughs> oh, uh, oh yes. I believe it's yeah. Avias of Miss Bennett says she loves it. So we one have parent said no. <laughs> <laughs> and we can always do both. <laughs> <laughs> when we're able to. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, that's good feedback for us. So it looks mm -hmm. like many of you do, but clearly we know that some people like face-to-face. -face, so when we, when we can do face-to-face, -face, we will, and we should do face-to-face, -face. but I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for all mm -hmm. of you for just participating. And, and I do think we need to leverage our technology to get mm -hmm. more parents engaged because sometimes it's just, they want to participate, but the time, the gas, they've got children, they've got to cook meals, they've got to do homework. They have so many other things to do. And so this provides you an opportunity to do those things and yet participate and you can kind of respond when you need to respond while you may be doing some other things around the house. As long as you're not driving and, 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 and typing it in the chat box, we're good. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And we're leveraging our technology right now. So um, the next bullet is to lead, collaborate, and contribute to a team and community. This is extremely important in um, what we're dealing with today um, to make sure that our students become leaders, they're able to um, collaborate with a group, and they're able to contribute to that group and to the community. And this is taught really um, in our collaborative planning. It's taught in our classes every day. Um, so because you, you may need a leader in a group, you may need a leader in the classroom, you may need a leader um, at, with tutoring or you know, when you're collaborating and making sure all of our students are contributing. And when they're starting to contribute on a day-to-day -day basis, they become, again, self-aware of who they are they become confident in who they are and their abilities to not only contribute in the classroom, but to go out in the community and contribute to the community in a positive way. Um, so at this time, I'm going to pause to see if anyone else have any questions or comments with this particular portion of the vision statement. And I agree, yes, they do struggle with this skill in college. Yes, they do. Okay. With no other questions or comments. Manifest passions into realities. This was, again, manifest, one of the vocabulary words that, that came up um, in our discussion it, in the face-to-face -face community meeting. Um, manifest means that you're going to display, you're going to show um, a quality or feeling um, by your actions. You're just going to show your passion. You're going to manifest those passions. You're going to display those passions into reality. You're not just going to think about them. 
we're going to make sure that you take your passion and it becomes your reality. It becomes who you are. It becomes what you uh, want to do. It, you're writing your goals and, and you're basically working towards your goals. You're, you're demonstrating them. Um, so that's why we want to keep the word manifest. Again, that's another one of those high level vocabulary words that we want to ensure that our students um, understand. Uh, so at this time, if you have any questions or comments about this bullet, I'll pause. Dr. Wally, yeah. may, I, may I? Absolutely. May I share that I do think this one here was one that I really thought quite a bit about. You know, if we expect students to manifest their passions into realities, then not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom, we should have many opportunities, extracurricular activities um, for our students to figure out what those passions are and to participate in activities related to those passions, mm -hmm. whether it be starting an internet business, being an entrepreneur, being a, a race car enthusiast, or uh, there are just so many ways uh, being a, a person who wants to code. Uh, again, I just think it's important that we have extracurricular activities. Again, what's in the classroom is very important, but even beyond the classroom, our kids have got to be engaged. And so uh, you'll see a, a big, you'll continue to see a huge effort of engaging our kids beyond the classroom so that they can figure out what their passions are so they can manifest their passions into their realities. But if we don't give them a chance to, to, to participate in activities, it's very difficult to figure out what you have a passion for if you're not exposed to any, uh, any activities or any other, uh, any, um, um, if you will, if you're not exposed to the experiences wherein you can figure out what your passions are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There was one question about financial literacy, and it says, as a part of that pursuit of the passions, is there a possibility that we can also equip our students with financial literacy so as they go out in the world, they would know how to locate resources and manage their financial uh, resources? And yes, financial literacy is actually a part of an and I'm gonna go back to the Georgia State Standards. It's actually a part of um, the standards in most of the subjects. I can't say all, but most of the subjects, um, not just in mathematics. Um, I see that within my department um, with fine arts, uh, financial literacy is a part of the standards. The teachers are actually teaching, you want, you want to be this great artist, so, um, how, let's talk about how you're going to market yourself. Let's talk about uh, what what finances are out there to to assist you with grants to become to do this um, artwork or you know what have you. So it is out there, and I just met with CTAE today, and we did talk about literacy and how they're going to begin embedding um, financial literacy more often in their courses as well. And someone did um, mention financial literacy is a part of the social studies curriculum. Um, so maybe that's an area since it came up with one of our parents that we need to really look at and strengthen within, um, not just within our classes, but within our after school activities. What are we doing with these clubs? Um, how are they um, dealing with financial literacy as well? So I'll make that note so that we can discuss this as a district to strengthen that area. What about personal finances? Um, that includes, Dr. Beasley answered, that includes personal finances as well. Yeah, and, all, and just, just so for the benefit of all, all of the students are re required to take economics that includes mm -hmm. personal finances, but we also have a partnership with BBT, that's a bank, and our students participate in certain financial literacy modules through the, through the courses that they take. So it's through the teachers. So uh, while everybody may not be familiar with that, students are participating in that. What I've observed, though, is that sometimes they get it at school, but they don't see it at home put into practice. And then there becomes a disconnect. And what we've got to start doing is our kids have got to start seeing those personal finances or that financial literacy being modeled at home, talking about credit, talking about credit cards, talking about savings accounts, talking about checking accounts, 
talking about the stock market. Those are things that we got to do um, in our homes and the families. And so they may get it in classrooms, but if that's where it stops, then it's it, it's not enough, in my opinion, to be become a part of their their dispositions, a part of their thinking, et cetera. And then uh, I keep seeing Ms. Harrison's comments about the public libraries. Uh, they have tons of resources and opportunities as well. But again, they've got to be exposed to these things, not just in the classroom with the teachers, but when they go home, you got to talk about financial and personal uh, finances. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Beasley, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I am a parent of a student in Clayton County. And I just want the, the parents to know that um, my child did come home with um, an assignment for um, how to complete a W-2. How do you, um, yeah, and how do you file your taxes? Um, so we were able to have a conversation about that because I was in the process of filing my taxes at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so so it, Dr. Beasley is absolutely correct. When, when you know that they're covering those things, be it in social studies and mathematics, this happened to be in a math class. Um, so you'll, you'll be able um, to strengthen what is going on in the classroom. Okay, so for the next and final bullet, which when you read this, you're gonna say, oh my goodness, this is extremely important. Exhibit cultural responsiveness and international competitiveness in order to adapt and keep pace with an ever evolving world. Um, we are evolving right now as we speak. Um, and we're seeing how important it is to be culturally responsive. Um, and how to be competitive, not just here in the state of Georgia nationally, but internationally. So we wanted to make sure that that was a part of our vision and everyone that is researching Clayton County Public Schools, that they understand that this particular um, topic is extremely important to the school system. Um, so at this time, I'll pause to allow others to comment or to type in your questions that you may have. And while you're typing, Dr. Beasley, if you have anything to say. Well, if, if, if nothing else, the, the civil unrest that we're seeing shows you uh, that we need to really do a better job in our society of, of exhibiting cultural responsiveness. And of course, we wanna make sure that our kids are internationally competitive so that they can adapt and keep pace with what's ha happening in our world. And it is important to us. I know that there are some, there are some political positions out there where they want to be less international and less global and more focused on, on, on ourselves or, or more tribal. But I do think in order for our children to live in a world of peace in a world that is progressing, that they've got to learn how to get along with their neighbor. And that means their neighbor down the street their neighbor in the other state, and also their neighbors in the other nations. And if our children don't do that, and if we have a world where we don't do that well, I don't know how long we'll have much of a world for them to live in. And that's why it's important that, we're, that we have some type of cultural responsiveness, but that we also uh, know how to get along with people who may look different, talk different, be different, et cetera. If not, uh, I don't know how long the world will be able to sustain itself otherwise. Mm -hmm. I agree. And Ms. Johnson typed in the chat box, this sets us apart from many school systems. And, and I agree. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. I, I agree. And so is there any other questions or comments out there um, that you would like to uh, mention at this time? Okay. With that, that is... Uh, there's, a, there's a question by Shelby okay. Stewart. How will we measure if our students and community members are being successful in, in manifesting their passions into reality? Well, that's a great question, Shelby. And Dr. Wiley, would you say that part of our work is figuring out exactly what we do as we go through this process to figure mm -hmm. out how are we going to measure everything? That is correct. And we're actually in that process because we are going through the... the 
sometimes you don't hear about the day-to-day, -day, what we do with the strategic improvement plan, but right now we're going through the strategic improvement plan and the first step is this vision statement. But while we're doing our community meetings, we're also working in the background and looking at all of our action steps and our initiatives to see if they really align to the proposed vision statement. And then that next step is looking at how are we going to measure? How are we going to be certain that it's, it, we're holding everyone accountable? How are we going to know, um, like your example, that students are being successful in manifesting their passions? Um, on a holistic um, point of view, if you will, we know that they will be manifesting their um, passions into reality. If they are one, when they graduate and leave us, they are successful. They are contributing positively in the community. Um, out, you will see changes in our community, um, positive changes in our community. Um, so those are some soft ways that we can see um, measures, but we need quantifiable data. And that is what our research department will look into once we finish this entire process. Um, Dr. Wiley, I want to recognize, I, I think we've got our chief magistrate judge, uh, D Judge Dallas, on the um, on the uh, Google Meet. So I want to acknowledge her um, and any other elected officials. I was just looking at the list of participants. Of course, we've got our board member, Judy Johnson, who's already shared. And I just wanted to make sure that I see Tasha Mosley, our DA. District attorney is also on the uh, on the call. Did I see you, uh, District Attorney Mosley? Um, I just want to acknowledge that these very busy people took out time to come and participate on this session. And that means a lot. And I'm telling you all, Clayton County, there is something fundamentally happening in our school system, in our county. And Clayton County is on the leading edge. And so I just want to say thank you to, to all of you parents, to, to all of you for participating, to our leaders, to everyone for uh, just making this a priority as we become that high performing school system right here in the state of Georgia. We're going to be internationally competitive. And I want you all to know you have our commitment for that, to achieve mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And, and with that, Dr. Beasley, if no one else has any other comments, I did make a few notes, especially about financial literacy that we can take back to the team. Um, I want to say thank you for your participation and your input um, to this evening and coming out and helping us coming out. I'm so used to meeting face to face and assisting us with while we um, revise our vision statement. And Dr. Beasley, I'll let you close and say your final thoughts. Well, I, I think I've said it all. Just thank you to everybody and please share with others this opportunity so the next time it rolls around, we'll have more participation. I think we're headed in the right direction. It's, you know, we've got some, some, some days and weeks ahead of us as we plan for the new year, as we deal with this pandemic, but Clayton County has been leading uh, um, and we'll be sharing more, more of our plans as the weeks, as we get closer to uh, the, the start of school so just want everyone to know that we appreciate all of you. We love our children. We want the very best for them. We thank you for choosing Clayton County. And just know this, that we're committed to giving you the best school system, a high-performing school system. As we redesign, we are expecting much of ourselves. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Dr. Wiley, for your leadership and for organizing this event. And thank you to our board member, Ms. Judy Johnson for representing the Board of Education. Thank you, Dr. Beasley, and everyone have a great evening. Thank you.